unfulfillable inventory. It can become a huge problem, especially if you're not managing it, if you're not pulling it back on a weekly, bi-weekly, or even monthly basis, depending on how much unfulfillable inventory you have, it could become a burden and drive your business to the ground because that is missed money, missed opportunity that you could liquidate or bring back into your Amazon business as cash flow to reinvest into new, more profitable products that you can then list on Amazon. So if you're wondering where to find your unfulfillable inventory, if you're on your Seller Central page and you go to Manage FBA Inventory, right on the right of Fulfillable Inventory where Amazon has all of the units that you have in stock for a specific ASIN or a specific SKU, on the right of that is a column called Unfulfillable Inventory. Now what Unfulfillable Inventory is, is products that Amazon deems unsellable to the customer. Now there's six different categories of unfulfillable inventory and reasons why inventory ends up as unsellable or unfulfillable inventory. And these reasons can be found in the inventory adjustments report. So in the inventory adjustments report, in order to get to this report, you would click on your reports tab at the top of Seller Central. You would then click on fulfillment. And on the left hand side, there's an inventory tab. You would click show more and then you would click on inventory adjustments. And now inventory adjustments gives you pluses and minuses for all of the transactions and transitions that happen within an Amazon Fulfillment Center. And it actually tracks the movement and the removals or additions of units for sale or unsellable goods within Amazon's fulfillment network. So all of the information you need is in this report. I encourage anybody who's analyzing these reports, always right next to the top of the name of the report when you open the report. On the top it says learn more. Click learn more. When you click learn more, a little box on the right of your Amazon Seller Central page will pop up and it will explain to you and show you exactly what the information in that report entails. So when you do export this report and you start analyzing your inventory, your unfulfillable inventory, there's six different categories that Amazon has that they consider unsellable goods. The first ones being defective inventory that does not look or function as described. So for example, this product, right? This Wyman Wipes. The bottle is not in its regular form, right? So it's not as described. This product, Amazon would consider defective. It would end up in your unsellable inventory or your unfulfillable inventory. Another product right here, another defective product. Tampax Pearl, it's opened, right? This is unfulfillable inventory due to defective product. But here's the thing, right? This product probably cost us $5. If we just leave it sitting in Amazon, there's no opportunity for us to get any of that $5 back, right? I want some of this $5 back. I want at least half of this $5 back. So I wanna pull this unfulfillable inventory back to our warehouse so we can liquidate it through other opportunities. I could list it on eBay as damaged and sell it for maybe half the price. So if it's selling on Amazon for 14, maybe I could list it on eBay for eight, right? I could bring it to a flea market and sell it. I could probably get $2 for this at a flea market. I could give it to my employees. I could sell it to my employees. I could give it to my family, my friends. I could sell it to my family or my friends. I could list it on let go as a bulk deal with all my unfulfillable inventory. I could list it on Facebook marketplace you can list it on all of these different options so just because Amazon considers it defective doesn't mean that you can't get your money back right so the next category is customer damage it was damaged by the customer and they sent it back whatever their excuses it doesn't matter right we are in a customer based business the most important person of every transaction is the customer so they are super important into the transition and transaction of your products right if the customer returns it damaged you could exchange five emails and waste the time or you could just refund them their money and deal with the damaged inventory and unfulfillable inventory and then we have distributor damage is when it was damaged by the seller, the vendor, or the distributor upon receiving. So Amazon's processing your inventory at their fulfillment centers and they're scanning it off the pallets or out of the UPS boxes and they're saying, okay, this one's damaged. This is distributor damage because they received it like that. 
It didn't happen in the next category, which is warehouse damaged, which was actually a product that's damaged in their warehouse. Now, if it's damaged in their warehouse, you can get the cost of that product back, right? You would have to create, you would have to look at this inventory adjustment report, see any warehouse damaged inventory, and then make sure Amazon is reconciling this inventory properly to make sure that they are refunding you for that warehouse damaged product because it wasn't distributor damaged, it wasn't damaged by me, it wasn't damaged by you, it was damaged by Amazon, so they owe you that money. And then we have carrier damage, which means it was damaged in transport or while in transit to a customer or during the process of a customer return. So let's say the customer's returning it. They say it was in great condition. I'm just returning because I no longer needed it. Amazon receives the product damaged. That's considered a carrier damaged. And the last option is expired. So that means it's past the expiration date. So when it comes to expirations, you need to be sending inventory into to Amazon that has greater than a 90 days to shelf life. And now that only pertains to products that aren't dosed out in daily doses. Let's say you have a vitamin, right? And that vitamin has a 60 day supply of vitamins in it. It's 60 vitamins. You actually have to add those 60 days to that 90 day shelf life minimum that Amazon requires. So that product would actually have to have 150 days of shelf life on it for you to send it to Amazon. And where that can get complicated is when you get these supplements or these health products that have a full year of supply in the bottle, because then you gotta do, what is that? Uh, 360 plus 90, you're at 450 days of inventory. But because manufacturers know that there's 360 days of inventory, they're not throwing a close expiration date on them. The expiration is gonna be at least three years out. Like this product, for example, we just got this product ship back to us this product is expired so Amazon said that this product is expired which it is but does that mean that this tea isn't drinkable by someone else who would want to buy this absolutely not I know our employees would jump all over this if I offered it to them for a dollar right I could bring this to a flea market sell it for a dollar no problem someone would buy this within two seconds of unloading it out the truck because it's a deal it's a deal, a dollar for this, it expired a couple days ago, no big deal, but Amazon has requirements and we understand that so you can't sell this inventory on Amazon. And that's fine with us because we're gonna liquidate it other places. We're gonna move this inventory other places, whether it's eBay, flea markets, uh, liquidation through let go or Facebook marketplace, selling it to our employees, using it for our own consumption because then we're getting the use out of it. So another option you have to deal with your expired inventory is for example, this grape nuts. This expired in November, right? There are actually companies that will take donations of expired goods and you could use the donation amount as a tax write-off at the end of the year so you can lower your tax bracket or lower the amount of taxes you're going to have to spend because you donated, let's say, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 last year in expired inventory. So you actually get some of that money back. Just because Amazon considers it unfulfillable or unsellable does not mean that is unsellable or unfulfillable in other routes, in other marketplaces, in other avenues to get rid of this inventory. There's a lot of opportunity that people are missing out on. And so I'm going to explain to you exactly the process in which we use over here at Amazon Lit to manage this unfulfillable inventory and understand what's defective, what's expired, what's customer damage, what's warehouse damage, what's distributor damage. Understand these different metrics. First, you really need to dive deep into that inventory adjustments report. If you haven't spent any time in your inventory adjustments report, learn it, especially if you're trying to grow a viable business selling on Amazon. That information in there will blow your mind. It's in depth and very on point when it comes to that information. So I'm about to explain to you exactly how we manage our unfulfillable inventory over at Amazon Lit. And we didn't always have systems in place and we used to get four, five, six, seven, eight pallets of returns just stacked up in the corner of our warehouse until we realized how much money was actually sitting on those pallets 
thousands of dollars were just sitting there, not working for us, but working against us. We weren't able to reinvest that money into new inventory to flip it and make more profits because it was just sitting in a pallet on our warehouse, right? So we've implemented some systems and what those systems look like, I'm gonna break them down for you. So once a week, my job is to go sort our unfulfillable inventory. So I go to Amazon Seller Central, I go to Manage FBA Inventory, and I sort unfulfillable inventory column from largest to smallest, so I can see all the largest quantities of what we have in stock. And now if the product is considered expired, I will check the expiration with our documentations of inventory that we sent to Amazon. I will check the expiration versus the expiration that we actually have and see, okay, is Amazon making a mistake here? Is this inventory actually expired? A lot of times, to no surprise, we will find out that the inventory doesn't expire for 18 more months. Why did Amazon consider expired? So we'll actually have to create a case and say, hey, Amazon, can you please investigate these 42 units that you're considering expired? Because according to my documentation at my warehouse, we sent this inventory in on bowl and you'd give them the FBA number. We sent them in on shipment, you give them the FBA number and we have a documented expiration of let's say 1-22-2022. And this is the documented expiration for 60 units. We have transactions that we sold 18, but these 42 inventory units that you're telling me are expired are not expired. Please investigate. And they'll get back to you in 48 to 72 hours. And actually, you are 100% correct. We will remove that expired inventory from your unfulfillable units, and we will put it back into your fulfillable units because it can be sold to the customer. So now that brings us to defective units. Now, defective units are very challenging to figure out exactly why Amazon's considering the unit defective. So what we do for 95% of our defective units, because Amazon has a very reasonable rate to ship the de defective units, ship any unit back to your fulfillment center or back to your warehouse or back to your home or back to your storage facility. They only charge you 50 cents a unit to ship that inventory back to you. So what we do is we pull all of our defective inventory back to our warehouse we check it for quality control to ensure it's defective. And if it's not defective, we may need to repackage it, or we could sometimes just send it right back to Amazon. Because for some reason, their system is considering it defective. But after we did a quality control check, we are realizing it's not defective, or maybe just the bag was ripped, right? Maybe there's a slight dent that we were able to remove out of this. Like, let's say this box had a little dent in it, and I'll just be able to pop it back in and send it back to Amazon. It's still the same product. It was just dented a little. But if I could make it appear in the condition that a customer would buy this at their local grocery store and there's no visible damage to it, then I could send it right back to Amazon. So once a week, I pull this inventory back and our warehouse staff downstairs knows what inventory I'm pulling back because I copy and paste all the inventory that I pulled back into an email and I blast it out to our entire staff but downstairs. I blast it to the three managers and I blast it to some of the warehouse team so they know exactly what's coming back, how many units of each. And then when it comes back to our warehouse, they receive it from the UPS driver, they organize it on a pallet, and a few days a week, one of our team members downstairs spends the time going through unit by unit, checking expiration date. He would move this to the donations pallet. We may list it on eBay. We may bring this to a flea market. We would offer it to our employees. We have a few tables set up downstairs where we actually display items that our employees can purchase at a highly discounted rate. And it's just a little cash that we get back into our pockets. And really it makes our employees happy. So it's great for morale. And then this product that expires in 20 days that we have very little to do with, isn't just gonna sit around until it expires. It gets to be used and we get some of the money back. So we pull that inventory back and we have processes set in place. Some of it goes to eBay. Some of it we list on Facebook Marketplace. A lot of it we take to flea markets. We go to flea market once a month and at those flea markets, we pull in $2,000 in sales revenue. $2,000. That's $24,000 a year we pull in from this unfulfillable inventory that just would have been sitting at Amazon or sitting in my warehouse if we didn't have a process in place to handle it. 
So there's a ton of options when dealing with unfulfillable inventory, but if you don't have systems in place, it's gonna be really complicated for you to manage this money because this is money you spent on these products. You wanna get that money back because when growing this type of business, every dollar counts. If I can reinvest the money that's just sitting in my warehouse in that death pile of returns, or the money that's just sitting in Amazon in their unfulfillable inventory, if I can reinvest that, if you can reinvest that into profitable products, you will have much more cash flow to grow your Amazon business. That $24,000 a year that we make at flea markets is just a percentage of what we actually do with this unfulfillable inventory. A lot of it we list on eBay. We probably do another twenty to thirty thousand dollar a year on eBay, just in unfulfillable inventory, and then tax write-offs. You know, from donations, we probably donate fifty to eighty thousand dollars a year of product that go to somebody who needs them. So if you think your business is falling apart because you're not managing your unfulfillable inventory properly, then maybe you're not. Maybe there needs to be some steps implemented like discussed in this video, you need to take some initiative to manage this unfulfillable inventory so you can bring that money back into your business. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay lit.